Hello, everybody, and welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy, and we have a full crew with us today. We have Andy Barrett from MyFM 101.3. We got Bob Hamilton with us. We got Jared Keene and Kevin Stone from the Metro West Daily News with us. And we have a lot to talk about. And before we get into it, let's get some uh, important notes that you should know about out of the way as far as Hiller Sports. Don't forget all you parents out there that want to sign your kid up for Little League Baseball or Softball in Hopkinton. The registration is open and the deadline is January 31st. Head over to HopkintonLittleLeague.org. And click register now and do that before January 31st for Hopkins and Little League Baseball and Softball. Also, we have a number of broadcasts coming up on HCAM this week and a couple notes to tell you about. Originally, we were supposed to have girls hockey on Wednesday night. That game has been postponed to February 13th, so no hockey on Wednesday and also uh, Thursday, January 7th, there'll be no alpine skiing. That meet has been postponed as well. We'll certainly keep you up to date with future changes. So the first HCAM winter sports broadcasts you'll see will hopefully be Friday, January 8th. With a double dose of girls basketball we'll, at 5 p.m. We'll have the JV game versus Norwood at 6.30 p.m., the varsity game versus Norwood. And then we have weekend action Saturday, January 9th, varsity boys hockey, 3.40 p.m. versus Norwood. And then Sunday, January 10th, a double dose of boys basketball. 12.30 p.m., we have JV versus Norwood. And at 2 p.m., we'll have Hillers varsity versus Norwood this Sunday January 10th. So a weekend full of sports on the HCAM channels. And hopefully everybody will stay uh, safe and all the teams will stay healthy and we'll be able to have some winter sports for you. But certainly a big if with what's going on out there right now. Uh, That's a personal note from me, Tom. I plan on being at the Athletic Center this Friday for those two games. I'll be happy to get back into Hopkinton High School to see some live action and we'll be broadcasting that live as well. Absolutely. It should be a a lot of fun and uh, the teams expected to be pretty good this year as well. So we are looking forward to it. We're adding the JV games this year because we know that the fans are going to be limited to some extent as to what extent we're not exactly sure yet. We haven't gotten the final word, but we know, uh, They'll be limited to some extent. So we want to get those games out there for the community to see. But uh, in any case, we got a whole lot to talk about on this show here today. And that's why we brought it in the A team to break it all down. And of course, we'll have our wild card weekend playoff picks as we do our football picks every week. We'll reveal. Who was the winner of week 17? And uh, it was certainly very close. Should be a lot of fun. But uh, guys, how you doing, Andy? Let's start off with you. Uh, What have you been up to? How's everything going over at uh, MyFM? And uh, we know you have your great sports show every Saturday at 11 a.m. And you had some great guests on recently. We did, Tom, and uh, Happy New Year to all of uh, all of you as well. It's great to see all of you. I hope you all enjoyed your holidays. And, uh, you know, you say bring it on the A-team. We're, ju- we're just missing the black man with the red stripe, Tom. You know, that's <laughs> that, that would have been epic uh, drive, drive <laughs> thing. But anyways, um, yeah, we had a good show. Uh, we did our year in review a couple of weeks ago on the 26th and uh, just really talked about everything that happened this year. I mean, it was pretty much COVID-dominated, of course, but, you know, people forget that it it just it shut the whole world of sports down i mean it really did i mean there was a time where when this whole thing first started i mean there was literally nothing going on nothing so the fact that we're even playing sports right now is is a testament in itself and it's great to see but um we also had peter boucher on this past weekend from the milford athletic director and and he was pretty up up front with a lot of stuff that's going on milford is set to open up their season this week um with uh, basketball 
and uh, they're doing the same thing in the Hockamock League as they did in the fall. It's pretty much a back-to-back. So, for example, they're only playing teams in the Kelly Rex division, and the Davenport plays teams in the Davenport. They will have a, a, a mini tournament at the end like they did last year. But there's still a lot up in the air. You know, um, for example, I know Taunton had shut down their athletic program, and I'm not sure if they started back up yet. Foxborough was not having any – fans at all at any of their games coming up this year and um milford will only be having home fans two fans per household so that's up to probably about 50 people so there's a lot going on here look i've learned gentlemen you just gotta take this thing day by day now i mean the numbers are astronomical nobody can deny that right now so really i mean you're just i mean look at what happened in worcester they canceled sports two days before christmas so i mean for the winter so you just that's just the whole thing I've kind of taken from this thing is and is uh, being cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I think that's all you can be right now, and we certainly hope that uh, all the winter sports end up taking place and everybody stays safe. But uh, unfortunately, already some schools having to postpone their seasons and cancel. Hopefully, we won't see too much more of that. Uh, Jared, how have you been? We haven't had you on in a while, and. Uh, you uh, covering any games this uh, upcoming week? A lot of local action starting to take place. Uh, I've been good, Tom. Um, hope everybody's also had a nice New Year, as Andy said. Um, it's good to be back on the show. It's after a couple of weeks. Uh, always enjoy being on here. Um, I uh, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm actually uh, going on vacation on Thursday for uh, for a little bit. Um, something that I had planned since before the winter season started long ago. Um, we, we won't make you uh, tell everyone where you're going because I think people <laughs> will get too jealous. But I will be back in action uh, right when I get back and uh, looking forward to get out and finally seeing some games. Um, you know, again, kind of interesting timing with uh, my vacation, uh, you know, with games starting up this week. But, um, you know, again, I've had this booked since October, so. I think it's a great uh, time for a vacation. I wish I, I, I wish I was going on vacation. We all need one. We yeah. all need a vacation. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've been pretty good. You know, just uh, you know, just chugging away, working on all star stuff, and you know, cranking out whatever stories I need to, and just going from there. All right, uh, Kevin, how about you? How have you been? Uh, do you have any games coming up? Doing good, guys. Uh, happy New Year to you guys, and. Uh, no games. Jared mentioned All Stars, and uh, he can attest. Not doing this in person is a nightmare for us. Um, so uh, we're we're basically grinding away on All Stars, and uh, no games as of yet. But I'm sure we'll both be back at it uh, within the next couple of weeks or so. And um, I've actually seen a few kind of different modifications. I know uh, there's a few rates that are now not allowing media or fans. Uh, this year, really, yep. yeah, I saw that today oh. on Twitter. Uh, I forget which rink it was. I want to say the uh, Hoboken, or it, I'll mess up the name, but I hope it's not the uh, New England Sports Center. That's no, it's no, not no, the God. New England Sports Center. No, God, especially now that the uh, the Providence Bruins are gonna play the there, Bruins, too. yeah. Right. Um, so, no, I mean, in terms of game coverage, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like for us. Um, like, uh, like you said earlier, it's it's up in the air, it's it's honestly day by day, uh, for everybody. So. Uh, it's going to be another weird season, and and hopefully we can get out to the ranks of the courts and and keep having that same coverage. Because I know between September and or actually March and July of this past year, we didn't do a damn thing. So uh, hopefully that's not the case this winter. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but uh, you know, at least we got the uh, vaccines coming out, so hopefully that'll uh, be a positive thing. But of course, now you got the new strain, more contagious, so that's scaring everybody. Uh, but I'm sure NHL and NBA must be uh, pretty happy to at least not be in a bubble this year, uh, which is good. And uh, hey, Tom, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a point. Thanks. Um, as everybody pointed out, it's uh, glad to have uh, some sports coming back, but I wanted to make emphasize that I really think it's great that the players, the athletes are finally getting a chance to perform against uh, their competitors, their other schools throughout the, this uh, going to practice every day, going to practice every day and playing amongst yourselves. That's, 
that's nice, but it, it really makes a big difference, I think, to the athletes to have a chance to compete in the uh, leagues. Absolutely. And that's what it's really all about, no matter what you have to do. If you have to limit the fans, you have to change the rules a little bit. It's really about getting those high school athletes out there or college athletes even a chance to compete and a chance to play because you only have a few years to do it. So having a year taken away from you is it's just not good. So it's good that the athletes are getting out there for sure. And speaking of rule changes, I know a couple of the rule changes in basketball that'll be pretty interesting this year is told to us from uh, Hiller's head coach, uh, Tom Keen, a couple of weeks ago here on the show, there'll be no jump balls this year. And on inbounds, you'll see no baseline inbounds. It'll only be from the sidelines and the defender has to be six feet away from the inbounder. So you, I don't think you'll have too many steals off those uh, inbounds this year. So some Interesting rule changes in basketball, but I'm glad that pretty much the main structure of the game is staying intact. It, it doesn't I agree. Seem like Tom, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I love basketball and I think, uh, you know, I mean, I think the game is going to generally look pretty, you know, pretty similar. You know, I don't think there's going to be, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, not seeing inbounds plays, not having a jump ball could be kind of weird, but I think for the most part, it's going to um be the same for the most part and i'm i'm excited about that you know not not too many crazy ridiculous modifications or anything like there wasn't soccer this year there's there's a bit of a crazy modification uh with the halftime break typically the halftime breaks are 10 minutes right here two and a half minute halftime break that's a reporter's dream i know kevin's talked about it before reporter's dream right there Oh, absolutely. But I can't imagine it's a coach's dream or a player's dream because they probably could use a few minutes uh, break after running the floor for that first half, especially if you're in a close game with a good team. And the coaches, uh, I mean, how many times do you see a coach in a basketball game make halftime transitions, especially when the first half just didn't go well at all? That's really a huge part of the game. Now you only got two and a half minutes to make those halftime transitions. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this affects some of the coaches that are great at making those halftime transitions, like a coach keen or, you know, uh, either of the Franklin coaches for the boys and girls team or coach Seaver and Milford. So I think uh, the shorter halftime is definitely going to be uh, very interesting. And, uh, I'm glad that they're playing. Most of the rules are still pretty much the same. There'll be a few differences, but it won't be crazy differences, uh, which is good because you'd certainly like to see the game keep those basic skill sets. You don't want to change the game as much as like you had to change soccer with no throw-ins, which is a huge part of soccer. So it's good to see that uh, most of the rules will still be the same, but there will be a couple of cautions taken and i haven't heard any uh hockey rule changes i don't know if you guys have heard anything about that you know but the uh, i looked up what rink uh, i was talking about earlier it's the hobbamock rink which i have no clue where that is uh, <laughs> they are not, not they are not allowing media in this year um so hopefully they're the only ones but um in terms of rule changes no it seems like hockey it, it's pretty tough to change that game up you know, basketball, I guess it's a little bit easier. Uh, but hockey, I mean, what are you really going to do? Right. I, know, I, think, I think I saw scrums might be limited to like three yeah. guys in front of the net. So uh, I'm not sure how the hell you kind of – you really Scrums in front of the net and along that, the boards, but, I think. Yeah, yeah so that, I, I did hear something about that. Yeah, like, so other than that, though, it's, it feels like hockey might be the first sport we've seen, you know, this year that stays relatively normal. Right. I think there's also something with the face off or like the face off, the, the only the two guys taking the face off can like be the only guys in that general area yeah. when the face off is happening. Yes, I believe you're correct on that. It, wouldn't it be fun though to see some three on three hockey? <laughs> hey, like Jared said, the quicker the better for us. Right. So whenever it gets me in and out in an hour and a half, I'm all for it. Absolutely. And uh, I wonder if there'll be any, uh, period break changes uh, with hockey. So actually, now that you mentioned it, I saw the other night, I believe it's two 22 and a half minute periods. It um, is. Now it I is. saw, 
No, I'm not sure if that's a league thing. Uh, I know I'm just scrolling on Twitter the other yeah. night and happened to see, you know, someone at a game and they said that. Um, so I'll, I'll, it'll be interesting to see if that's, you know, statewide or, or just for one league. But again, whatever gets us out quicker, I'm in. <laughs> Absolutely. But we'll have to look into that because pretty yeah. much uh, that would be two halves instead of three right. periods. So that would be uh, pretty interesting. I don't know what difference that would make. Uh, maybe just limiting the gatherings at the bench or something like that. Uh, that could be it. But uh, we'll have to look into that one. So uh, I believe you saw it, but I want to see if that's statewide, if that's just uh, some yeah. league. Uh, but we'll look into that and certainly let everybody know. Or we'll just find out Saturday, <laughs> which will probably be the case. Uh, but winter high school sports, they are underway. There's a couple of games tonight, um, especially uh, in the Hockamock. There's a few big games. Franklin and Milford are meeting up tonight. You got the boys over at Milford, the girls over in Franklin. That's always a great rivalry. So that should be fun. And uh, they'll, they'll be meeting up a couple times this year. And I think one of the great things about this winter season you're going to see a lot of those local rivalries a whole lot more than you normally would. Uh, you look at the Hopkins and hockey schedule, you got the Hillers meeting up with Westwood four times. And those two teams, when they meet up on the ice, they typically play a tense game with a lot of hits. And uh, it's gotten quite chippy in some of those meetings. And the fact they have to meet up four times this year, that'll certainly be interesting. And, a big part of that is Ashland Halston. They had to postpone the start of their season, but they are hoping to get their season in. And I guess the good news for a team like the Hillers or a team that's playing now, you might get two games added later on since Ashland and Halston are starting a little bit later. So you might go from 10 games to 12 games. But I think it's going to be cool to see some of those uh, rivalries uh, a whole lot more this season. Tom, you make a great point, and this is something that Peter Boucher had said on our show, that it's kind of like a, the way the Hockamock League, League has it, and it seems like the Tri-Valley as well, it's kind of like a baseball schedule almost. You're going you're gonna to see this team back-to-back, -back. and I, I can see why they're doing this, because it all comes back to the – if there's an outbreak, if there's con they get with contract tracing, you know, what if you, you played Franklin one day, and then you're playing King Phillip, and then you're playing Mansfield? It's just all over the place. You can't, you can't possibly – track that so i personally think these schedules i think they're going for the rest of the academic year i cannot see any tournaments taking place this year because let's face it you're already seeing problems with this vaccine being rolled out unfortunately and it, i just think it's just going to be too crunched in together because let's not forget that spring sports season isn't expected to start until the end of april and then you still get the fall two season in there so so immediately after this winter is, is over you're going right into the fall two and Peter also mentioned this too that I thought was very interesting. I think athletes are going to have to lot, make a lot of cho difficult choices because there's a lot of multi-sport athletes out here. Okay, well, I just got done a basketball season. Do I want to put my body through football? You know what I mean? Right. Or, do I, or do I want to play volleyball? Wrestling's going to be held outside in the spring. And here's the other thing. You got to remember about winter cancellations just with bad weather. I mean, you, we get a major storm or something that could derail a lot because you simply do not have the flexibility to make up a lot of games, unfortunately. Right. And especially if a snowstorm hits in that uh, late March, early April time period, oh. which has happened in the past and you got the spring sports starting up, that could certainly be an issue. Uh, the, I guess the good news is uh, at least around here, a lot of the local teams have turf fields, which will certainly help get them started sooner. Uh, but wrestling outside, that'll be pretty interesting, I must say. Uh, it's going to be crazy. And uh, you know there'll be some athletes making some choices there because there's baseball players that wrestle uh, and there's uh, lacrosse players that wrestle. So there'll be uh, some choices made there by some athletes. And I think it's the last thing any AD wanted to do is move the sports season. Yeah. Uh, they didn't want the athletes to have to make these choices. Swimming at, in Hopkinton's case was another sport that they had to move to the spring because they couldn't find a pool since their usual location is closed for the season. Uh, they had to move the swimming season. So some of those athletes will have to make a choice. Um, also, indoor track and field had to move to the fall too. And it's not because they probably couldn't play. It's because you just said it, the lack of facilities. 
And a lot of these schools, unfortunately, they do not want these other teams coming in. And I've talked to multiple people, you know, off the record saying that they just don't know how indoor track is going to be able to take place. You are in such a tight, confined area. Now, you go to some of the bigger facilities, you have more room, but it's really such a good point. I mean, well, I I, the TVL, there's a lot of TVL teams doing yeah. uh, indoor track outside. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you can do it, that's, that's the thing, you know, as long as you have good weather. But, yeah, that, that's going to be really tough, unfortunately. It's just outdoor track will be a lot easier, I think, because you're outside. But it, it really comes down, it's, especially with swimming and, and that, it's a lack of facilities. It's really what it comes down to. Yeah, and, and real quick, you guys both mentioned, you know, turf fields are a great thing. Uh, but I have a parent who's actually a superintendent. Uh, I won't obviously say the district, but, um, and they're actually worried about uh, in talking with ADs and getting those fields plowed and, and ready to go uh, for, mm -hmm. for instance, the fall two season um, for football. There's a lot of stuff that people haven't really, you know, taken into consideration, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, I'm not surprised about, but first of all, if we're going to play football in the, in the, you know, in February and March, you got 30 kids who aren't playing standing on the sidelines, freezing. Um, so you have to take those kids into consideration. Um, the fields to get plowed. Look, there's a lot of places that have brand new turf fields. And if those are going to get plowed, it's about $5,000 to get a plow, oh, yeah. uh, which is what I was told. So um, there's a lot of cost that's going to end up, you know, being taken into consideration along with the virus and all that. So um, right. the way that they've kind of pushed everything back towards, you know, February and March and, and kind of hope for the best, uh, you're going to start to see there's going to be some problems with that now uh, for all the, the upcoming seasons. Winter should be okay, but uh, between fall and spring, you guys mentioned it, kids having to choose. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that still needs to get figured out, and that season's supposed to start in about a month. Um, so it might get ugly pretty soon. I was, I was just going to say the same thing as Kevin. I think, uh, you know, personally, I think the fall two season is going to be critical um, just for a lot of the same points that Kevin and Andy just made. Um, you know, I, I'm not worried so much about the spring season, but I think that yeah. fall two season is going to be extremely critical because you're going to have uh, the opportunity during that fall two season for, um, you know, postponements, a lot of issues that you can run into, um, and then things get backed up even more. Um, you know, so I think that fall two season is going to be critical again, you, you know, nobody can, um, you know, control the weather or anything like that. You know, if we get a foot and a half of snow or something at the end of February or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I think that fall two season is going to be extremely critical just in terms of if that goes smoothly, then you can probably try to make a transition, uh, into the spring season. But if that doesn't go smoothly, you're, you're pretty toast for probably the rest of the year. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously like Kevin and Andy said, as I said, there's, um, you know, a lot of things that can go wrong. So I'm just we'll hoping see. up, I'm just hoping it doesn't end up like that winter four years ago where we got a blizzard just about every week, but right. oh gosh, <laughs> that's the thing. Like if you're going to be clearing these fields every week, not only for football, but then, you know, you want lacrosse teams and, and baseball teams out there starting in March and April, you're just going to run out of time eventually. And you're yeah, gonna then, run out. And you're yeah. gonna run out of money. These schools exactly. don't have these budgets to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Kevin, you just said I mean, you're gonna plow the field four times. That's twenty grand. Yep. I mean, it's just it's just being realistic. No, no. The easy the easy solution is just make the kids go shovel like when we were in high school. Right. Uh, but that that's never gonna happen now. No. So, no. Um, so yeah, that's that's not cheap either. So, like I said, it, it might get ugly pretty soon. On top of that, what about the use of indoor facilities? I mean, you know, in the past, you know, lacrosse teams or baseball teams have had to use like gyms, mm -hmm. you know, to get the to get their early season practices going. You know, how are you going to do that if gyms are, you know, being used for as classrooms or you know whatever else? Or so yeah, I mean, the use of indoor facilities is going to be cr critical as well. I mean, yeah. might have to use parking lots. <laughs> yeah, might have to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to point out that in Hopkinton, they've had to move. They've had the athletic center set up as a classroom. And in order to allow basketball to happen, they have to move everything out of the basketball court into the far corners of the athletic center, even covering the track without opening any of the bleacher seats. And then they have to put it all back 
on Monday morning so they can run classes during the week and then take it all apart so they can do it uh, for basketball on a Friday night. And that's just one more facility that's not going to be available anytime except that specific al- allocated time. I'm sure the it's custodians like, love that. Yeah. It's like being in elementary school when you had the gym, the cafeteria, and the auditorium all in the same room. Right. At least I did. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have an athletic center, like in Hopkinson's case with desks and uh, all kinds of classroom equipment in it, there's no way you could practice baseball in there, really. Uh, maybe you could uh, throw it around a little bit, but you certainly can't have batting practice in there uh, with all that stuff in the way. So it's going to be real interesting to see how they uh, are able to work into this spring season. Uh, But I guess you got to hope that the weather won't be too bad and there won't be much snow on the ground. They could go outside, but who knows? Uh, I always expect that. uh, I always expected this winter to uh, bring some snow just with the way the last year has gone. So, but uh, we shall see. It should be very interesting. And I think uh, football is definitely going to be the most (laughs) problematic sport. I think if they could go back and do it again, they would probably have football just play in the fall. Uh, Because Kevin, I thought you brought up a great point that those fields, very expensive to plow. And I just remember covering playoff games a couple of years ago We had a big snowstorm and there was a number of facilities that were supposed to host playoff games that didn't want to spend the money to plow the field. And uh, I guess the MIAA couldn't afford it either. So they had to move all kinds of games around to all kinds of different locations. And it was very tough to find a facility to have some of these games. And they found a facility very late. And uh, a lot of the facilities they didn't have any concession stands or anything like that. Some of them didn't even had a, have a bathroom facility nearby. So you won't have that problem this year since there's no playoffs and it's just uh, home and away games, but snow could certainly make the uh, situation with football very interesting, but I think, you know what, go out there and play in the snow. <laughs> let, let them have fun in the blizzards. Uh I'm sure most of the players will want to get out there anyway. You got to get creative. And I've been saying that since day one. And, and I think the, the ADs and the administrators understand that. And I, and I really want to give them a lot of credit because I can't even fathom being in these type of positions. It's got to be, there has to be sleepless nights. I mean, you have to, I mean, just getting emails constantly, parents complaining this and that. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just gotta be, it's gotta be crazy. Yeah. The, the, lack, of, the lack of direction from the state. Is infuriating too. Yeah. I mean, like I said, that football season is supposed to start in a month. Have any has have anybody heard of anything in terms of details? No, I know no. I haven't. No. Um, and again, that season is uh, right up against you know the spring season. So you guys mentioned the kids that have to choose. There is no lack. There is a complete lack of direction right now uh, with about a month to go. So like a, like Tom said, if they could have, uh, they would definitely. I think. Play in the play in the fall. Uh, if they nope. go back and do it again, um, it was ridiculous they didn't. Uh, you guys all know I've been on that soapbox for, geez, I don't, oh, know, yeah. I don't know how long now. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's I'm like right I said, with you. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's not going to be pretty if we get maybe two snowstorms. That's all it's going to take. Yep. Right. And yep. you'll see some games cut. You'll probably see some postponements, maybe with the spring season. So I guess you got to cross your fingers, hope there's not much snow, but in that time of year, there typically is, which is why when they first did that, I didn't really understand it at all. And it's going to be freezing out there. So from a media perspective, I'm not really looking forward to it, but I do hope the kids get out there and get to play. Uh, But speaking of football, we got to talk about wild card weekend and do our picks. Uh, But last week it was close and competitive Mike and myself went 12 and four. Guess who was the big winner? Bob Hamilton took the win going 13 and three. You know, just when I think I have Bob beat, I got a nice 12 and four record. No, nope, <laughs> not so much. 
Uh, but we have a whole lot of competition uh, this week, Bob, because we'll have Jared, Andy, and Kevin picking with us. So let's take a look at the six games for Wild Card Weekend. We'll, t- we'll start off with the AFC. We have the second-seeded Buffalo Bills, 13-3, and hosting the seventh-seeded Indianapolis Colts. That's the 1 o'clock game on Saturday, January 9th. I think this should be a good battle. Buffalo's red hot right now. Uh, they they have the spread there. Bills favored by six and a half. I'm going to go Buffalo. I think they're red hot. And uh, I'll take the uh, Buffalo spread as well. I think they'll win by seven. <laughs> Bob, what do you got? Yeah, I, I, I still think Buffalo thinks they can do it this year. I think Buffalo, Buffalo is one of the best teams that's risen to the top this year. And I, I don't I think they're going to beat that spread by at least two touchdowns. All right. Jared, how about you? I don't know about two touchdowns, but uh, I mean, I, I like Buffalo here. I think, um, you know, this this could be Buffalo's year. You know, I mean, obviously they would have to contend with some team, you know, other teams, um, you know, especially if they make it as far as the Super Bowl and there's some good NFC teams. But um, just the way Buffalo is playing right now, um, it's hard not to pick them here. Just rolling. I think, it's, I think it's safe to say Josh Allen is officially the real deal. Yep. He's played great this year. He's had a great season. He really has. And he has great weapons too, which certainly helps. Andy, who do you got? Well, um, I am going to take Buffalo, but let's keep a couple things in mind here, guys. This team has been horrendous in the postseason the last 25 years. I mean, they've had some of the worst playoff losses I've seen. <laughs> Number two, Frank Reich is the coach of the Colts. Don't you think he he wants to win this game more than anything to just give the Buffalo Bills just another thing they have to think about? And Phillip Rivers has had a lot of success against this team. I do like the Bills, but I think the Colts are going to keep it close. All right. We'll give you the Bills with the Colts spread. I agree. I think this will be a pretty close game. I'm I also this. agree with that. I, th- I third that. Uh, all right, Kevin, who do you got? So I, I want to change my pick based solely on that point by Andy about Frank Reich. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that. That's fantastic. It um, is. That's good stuff. You know, I'm going to go Buffalo here. Look, yes, they've been bad in the playoffs, but they haven't had a home game in I don't know how long. Uh, there's going to be fans in the stands for this. That place is going to be absolutely nuts, even though it's like 6,000 people. Uh, I think they have to take Buffalo here. The only bad thing about this game is they deserve better than 1 o'clock on Saturday. I agree. Like right. Four or, or eight on Saturday or Sunday. Yep. Those fans deserve some time to tailgate, man. Yeah. I mean, why do the Steelers and Browns get the nightcap? Right. You know, they play each other twice a year. And typically right. it's on one of the nightcaps at some point. Just to point yeah. out two guys, sorry, that in Buffalo, there is no, no tailgating will be allowed. They all have, to, everyone has to wear masks and they have to have a negative COVID test in order to attend. And oh, wow. uh, so there's a lot of strict protocols in place. And listen, I've been to games in Buffalo. The tailgating there is unlike anything you've ever seen. So well, I mean, the, t- the tables have uh, breathed a sigh of relief. So there won't be as many smash tables this year in Buffalo. <laughs> no, you know, I mean... they'll be, you, you know they'll be pre-gaming at home, though. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Of course. There's, oh, been definitely. Videos. There's been videos. They're having big get-togethers at homes and tailgating, yeah. watching the game and smashing tables and lighting things on crazy. fire. It's, it's, it's crazy, really. It's unlike anything. It, it's, it's unreal. To, to, to send a Buffalo Bills game. <laughs> I, I, I got to get to one. I got to get to one. I'm always An told experience. these great stories. I got to get to one. I sat in the rock pile. I made it. So let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> right. A- our uh, next game we're going to pick. It is the – oh, this is a Sunday night game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunday, January 10th, 8, 15 p.m. The night cap is the third seeded 12 and 4 Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Cleveland Browns, who are the sixth seed at 11-5. and five. This should be a good game. I think uh, Week 17 was a really good game. Mason Rudolph really gave the Browns a run for their money, almost was able to get the job done. But you got Big Ben coming into this one, and I think he's going to be ready for the Browns. I don't think the Browns are going to have uh, – as much uh, luck as they did in week 17. I'm going to go with the Steelers here. Bob, who do you got? Well, Andy forced me into this earlier when he asked me if I was picking the Browns for the 
Super Bowl, and I said no. So I'm going to pick the Steelers in this game. <laughs> and I think that there's no doubt about it. All right. Uh, Jared, who do you got? This is actually a tough one for me because the Steelers haven't really been playing great the last few weeks, but the Browns are dealing with COVID left and right. That I is mean, true. you know, uh, what Stefanski, the coach, I don't think he's even coaching this game. I think he's, he's not even not eligible to coach. Do they have receivers yet? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think what I, Higgins. Is I bad. mean, I think with the, what the Browns are. De- I think just because of what the Browns are dealing with right now, and between the injuries and COVID, I think I'm kind of going Steelers by default here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, you know, Steelers, it is. <laughs> Steelers, it is. Yeah, Andy, who do you got? Um, well, the Browns have not won a road playoff game since 1968. And now they have to go into a place where they have been so bad for for no for how long they barely could beat this team with Mason Rudolph. I mean, uh, you know, Jared said it right. They they they've been they're completely covered with COVID, unfortunately. And uh, I just I, I'm taking the Steelers. I think that actually the Steelers win this game pretty big. All right, uh, Kevin, who do you got? I, I wish I could take Cleveland. I really do. I love what they've done this year. But playing a divisional opponent for a third time on the road without your head coach, I mean, that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. you, have to, you have to go Pittsburgh here. If there was any other team, I'd give Cleveland a shot. But um, seeing the same team, you know, three times in a year, there's just no way. Yep. I feel like if this year was uh, somewhat normal, Cleveland would be in good shape heading into this game. Yeah. They'd probably have a higher seed. They've had some serious COVID issues, especially uh, when they had that Jets game and they had no receivers. That was quite interesting. Uh, but they've had some bad luck, Cleveland, this year, and I think they'll probably have more bad luck in this game as well. All right. Uh, the next game, this is a good one. This is the 1 o'clock game on Sunday, January 10th. You got the fourth-seeded 11-5 and five Tennessee Titans, the AFC South champions. Hosting the fifth seeded Baltimore Ravens at eleven and five, I am. Th- if there was a hard game to pick, it is this one, in my opinion. So you know what? We're gonna go in reverse order here. Kevin, you can start. <laughs> uh, give me Tennessee here. It's it's crazy to think that that one kick the other night they, that kept them at home. If that kick doesn't go through, they're in Buffalo this weekend. So uh, they'll ride that momentum. I think. I think Baltimore is still overhyped. Uh, I like Tennessee and, and Derrick Henry to run all over them. All right. Um, Andy, who do you got? Yeah, I'm taking Tennessee. I agree with Kevin here. This is a bad, bad matchup for Baltimore. They got absolutely <laughs> hammered by this Tennessee team last year. They're going to be fired up. I don't know how they can stop Derrick Henry. And uh, and also another guy, A.J. Brown. I mean, that catch he made yeah. against the Texans was – He is insane. ridiculous. That was yeah. insane. Really incredible. This Tennessee team is very dangerous. You never know what you're going to get out of them. I think they got Lamar Jackson figured out. I like Tennessee to roll in this one. All right, Jared. Uh, to be honest with you, I want to pick Baltimore, but uh, Andy makes a great point. I think this is just a bad matchup for Baltimore. I think, uh, you know, I think Tennessee takes this game. Um, I can see it being close, though. I can see it being, uh, you know, decide by a field goal or something. Um, you know, I think Lamar Jackson will be fired up, but – um, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry will also be fired up, and so will AJ Brown. And uh, give me Tennessee here, but right. in in a close one, real close. I think. I don't think this is going to be a blowout by any means. Yeah, I think this is going to be a close one as well. Uh, Bob, who do you got? I, I'm really surprised because uh, I thought this was going to be my uh, tough pick because uh, the Ravens. I've heard, uh, I've seen them come back on these tough games before, but I picked Tennessee. I thought that the Titans are on a roll, and I think they're going to keep it going. I, I thought I was going to be standing out there on an island picking Tennessee, but uh, now I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to go Tennessee too, and it's for this one reason. What does Baltimore do every year they get into the playoffs? They choke. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they, and they choked they, at Tennessee last year as well. And I who think they, they who, do, it who do they even play down the stretch? They played nobody. I mean, right. really. I mean, they've uh, Tennessee's been challenged. They've had some very tough games this year. So, Bob, don't worry. If we, if they lose, we all lose. So, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, I feel much better now. <laughs> all right, 
And now we got the NFC game. Some interesting ones here. Let's take a look at a game slate. Our first pick will be the Sunday, January 10th, 4.40 p.m. game. The number two, New Orleans Saints, 12-4, and four, hosting the number seven, eight and eight Chicago Bears. I don't typically do this in playoff games, but is anybody picking the Bears? No. God, no. no. Not, Not even me, and I picked the this Bears This game off. should have been 1 o'clock. Oh, Bob might. We'll give Absolutely. Bob the Bears. No, <laughs> yeah, this, I, I this should be the, the one o'clock. Kevin makes a good point. This should be the one o'clock game on Saturday. Yeah, I agree. All right, l- let's put it this way: Would anyone pick the Bears spread eight and a half? No. Uh, if, they, maybe. if they stop Nick Foles, I will. Eight and a half is a lot. I would. You know why? The Saints have choked in the playoffs. I don't think they're going to lose this game, but they've choked. I think this game's going to be closer than a lot of people think. So I, I don't trust Mitch Trubisky in the dome. That's all. I think they should stop Nick Foles, Kevin. I just well, yeah. I mean, how yeah. can you stop stop him? I, I would not stop Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, oh, yeah. this this Bears team's really only in because Arizona lost last week, right? Uh, but the Saints are dealing with some injuries too. I mean, I don't even know if Alvin Kamara is going to play. Arizona literally just in, found every way to uh, blow going to the playoffs. Awful. It was pretty unbelievable. Oh, so bad. No, I got the Saints. All six. right, our next game is the 4.40 p.m. Saturday, January 9th game. We got the third-seeded Seattle Seahawks at 12-4, and four, hosting the six-seeded Los Angeles Rams at 10-6, and six, another team that got in courtesy of Arizona. Uh, I think this is going to be a great game, a nice NFC West matchup. I think this will be a high-scoring close game. This is a tough pick for me. I'm going to go Seahawks in this one. I think Russell Wilson gets the job done. Bob, who do you got? Yeah, it's the Seahawks. I I, I just think that uh, Wilson will uh, run over the Rams. I, I don't I don't see them having that much of a problem with them. The Rams have had some good games over the past few um, weeks, but uh, not this time. All right, Jared. I'm going Seattle here. I've been on the Seattle bandwagon all year. Um, Russell Wilson again has just played tremendous this year. Um, I don't, I don't see them losing this game. I think you know, I, I really like what the Rams have done this year, um, and I think they will keep it close. But uh, I'm going Seahawks. All right, Andy. Well, if you look at the history, the, these games are always close, and I think the biggest thing is is how can they contain the Seahawks contain Aaron Donald because this guy can literally disrupt an entire game and He's also a game changer. And yeah. Jalen Ramsey is too. Listen, um, I think the Rams keep this close. I don't think Jared Goff is playing because I, I, I because of his thumb. So all right, yeah, yeah. He's so he didn't play out. this week. Out. This is going to be a very close game, but I can't. I can't bet against Russell Wilson. He just he just always seems to get it done. Seahawks win, but it's going to be a close game. Yep. All right. Kevin, who do you got? Yeah, Andy said it perfectly. Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald are – it's so hard to pick against them, but uh, the Seahawks at home, especially if Goff isn't playing, I think you just have to go with Seattle there. Um, I don't love it by any means, but uh, this is definitely the hardest game of the week to pick. Nope. It certainly is. Who do you think hits that four and a half spread? I, That's a great number. It I'll really tell you, is. Always, Vegas I think it's going to be four. Back. It's going to be a four point win by the Seahawks. <laughs> Rams are going to hit the spread by a half a point. I guarantee it. Vegas knows. Oh, yeah. they certainly do. They Vegas certainly always. do. Our last pick, the 8.15 p.m. Saturday game. The wa- the confident Washington football team at seven and nine, the fourth seed hosting fifth seeded t- uh, Tom Brady Buccaneers at eleven and five. Of course, that would be Tampa Bay. Um, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that Tampa is going to win this game, and I think they're going to win it big. And um, that. Defensive end in Washington. I'm forgetting Chase his Young. name. Right Chase now. Young. Yes, talking trash to Brady. Not a good idea. Doesn't typically no. uh, work out well. I'm going to go Tampa in this, and the spread seven and a half. I think the, I think Tampa's defense is bad though, so that's the only reason I think Washington football will keep it somewhat close. But I think towards the end of the game, Brady throws like three touchdowns in four minutes. Tampa just runs away with it. Bob, who do you got? 
Yeah, I'm picking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I think Brady's uh, got something to prove in the playoffs, and he, he's going to do it. And, and with uh, even though Gronkowski hasn't been much of a item this year, I think he's going to have a big game. So I think the Bucs are going to show Washington. They've got no business being there. I don't know how they got picked as a fourth seed. Anyway, that's well, ridiculous. it's because they won the division. Yeah, that's the only reason. They shouldn't even have had that division. Oh, I know. And, you know, I couldn't believe it. The The New York Giants had a right to they were complaining on Twitter <laughs> because the Eagles benched Jalen Hurts. They're <laughs> complaining on Twitter because the Eagles pretty much threw away that game. You only got six wins. Win more games. No right to be in the playoffs. Win more games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Don't put you are what your record says you are. Yep. I agree, yeah, don't put yourselves in that situation. It's ridiculous. No right to complain, New York Giants. Uh, Jared, who do you got? Uh, Bucks. Too many weapons. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I don't know if Mike Evans is playing this week. He might. I don't. He, I know he was out last week, he, but he is, even if he doesn't, uh, or he was in, got injured. Uh, just regardless, Bucks. Too many weapons. That's it. All right, I like it. Uh, Andy, who do you got? Well, I was at Tom Brady's last playoff game last year. He was awful in that football game. Now the Buccaneers have a lot of good players and they are clicking. This Washington team can be very feisty at times and their defense is not bad and they have a pretty good running game. I am picking the Bucs, but I think Washington is going to keep this close. All right. They certainly could. Uh, you know, Washington has been pretty competitive against good teams. They beat the, they beat they the, beat the, Steelers. the Steelers. Right. Yeah. And Alex Smith, this guy has come back player of the year. I honestly can't believe this guy is even playing. I mean, what an incredible story, really. You don't think he's got something to prove, too? Because he's 40 years old as well. He's like, hey, everyone's talking about Tom Brady. What about me? Mm -hmm. I mean, if Washington wins this game, the outrage in Tampa is going to be – Arians is gone if they lose this game. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine how mad Brady would be. Oh, it'd be, it'd be – I'm telling you. I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't know. I would kind of stay away from this – from the spread in this game. I don't know. It just – all right. No. I like it. It could be close. I just think Tampa is going to win it in a blow, in my opinion. But I could certainly see Washington keeping it close because that Tampa defense is so questionable, because that offensive line is so questionable. I mean, look at that game last week against Atlanta. It looked like it was going to be a Tampa blowout. But then the defense uh, struck for Tampa and gave up, uh, what was it, two straight touchdowns and a field goal, 17 unanswered points, and then – Brady started throwing the ball around again and got Tampa back on top. So you never know with this questionable Tampa defense. Uh, Kevin, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to take the Bucs, but I don't love it. Uh, you guys know we've been writing uh, Tampa Bay Tuesday pieces at the Liverpool Football Journal all year. Uh, I want him to win the Super Bowl. I now have a Bucks hoodie, all that. Uh, all that being said, you guys have all said it. The defense is very consistent. The offense has been very consistent really all year. Uh, they should have blown that Falcons team out on Sunday. They didn't. Uh, Chase Young is a problem. I don't love him against that uh, that Buccaneers offensive line all day. Uh, this game scares the crap out of me, but I'm still taking Tampa, and I'm praying they make it to the Super Bowl. But uh, don't be surprised if Washington wins, because uh, I won't be. All right. There it is, your picks. And we're going to have a bonus pick in a minute. And I'll let you know what that'll be. But uh, we do uh, want to let you know, of course, the one seeds are the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC, Green Bay Packers in the NFC. The next round, the divisional round, will be the 16th and 17th conference championships on the 24th. And then you'll have the Super Bowl at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa on February 7th. So if Tampa is able to win, they could be uh, playing a home game. Super Bowl game, which will be pretty incredible. None, none of us had different picks there, right, Tom? We all picked the same teams for every game? We didn't. And based on what we do on this next pick we're going to have, I might change one of mine to make things interesting. But before I decide to do that, we're going to pick our next bonus pick, and we're going to throw in a college football game. We're going to throw in the national championship game. We had the semifinals on New Year's Day. You had first-seeded Alabama taking down 
Fourth seeded Notre Dame, 31 to 14. And uh, I think with the way Alabama has been, 31 to 14 is actually a pretty close game since Alabama has just dominated everybody. And then in the other semifinal, the 7 and 0 Ohio State Buckeyes took down the Clemson Tigers, 49 to 28, in a high scoring battle. So your national championship game will be 8 and 0 Ohio State or 7-0 Ohio State, taking on 12-0 Alabama. We're going to pick it. I'm going to go Alabama because I just think they are just too dominant this year. I think Ohio State will keep it close. I love this matchup. It's a matchup of two great schools that have been in, uh, that have been in the mix for a championship game pretty much for the last several years. Uh, so it's nice to see these schools – battling each other i think it's going to be a great matchup but give me alabama bob who do you got yeah not surprising i'm picking alabama i watched the uh, ohio state game that was really a good game ohio state came back and if you notice they scored 21 points in the second quarter and right after that is when uh, fields got hurt was it fields and um he he hurt his ribs and he came back in the uh second half, but I, I'm not uh, confident that he's recovered. I know it's a long time between, but I just think that uh, Alabama has uh, just an awesome football machine and they just keep rolling. They played five more games this year than uh, Ohio State and they won those five games. So it doesn't, they don't look like they're about to lose now. No, they just put up so many points every game. It's pretty unbelievable. Uh, the Last few games, for example, they've put up 49 against Clemson, 22 against Northwestern. That was kind of a low-scoring one. But before that, you had 52 against Michigan State, 42 against Indiana, 49 against Rutgers. What a program they are. Jared, who do you got? Um, I'm going to Alabama here, um, and it's because of Devontae Smith. I mean, this guy is uh, – you know, I mean, he's, he's probably going to be – probably going to win the Heisman. Um, and he should probably win the Heisman. He is uh, an outstanding receiver. Um, you know, Ohio State's going to do everything they can probably to try to contain this guy, and he's still probably going to have a big game. Um, I like Fields, um, you know, and Fields obviously showed and had a big game against a good Clemson team, but I think you got to go. Uh, I think I'm going to Alabama here, and, again, it's because of uh, number six uh, for the Crimson. All right. Andy, I'm going with Alabama. Um, I think they were in cruise control, honestly, against Notre Dame, and they're a good football team. Okay, but this, Bob's right. This team is a this team is just a machine, really. Yeah. They are, and, and the five the playing the more than five games. Yes, it does. It does help. Of course, it helps. I mean, Ohio State's a good football team. I just it's just so tough for me to bet against bet against Alabama, um, and and they will win another championship. It's it's amazing how many titles they have now. It's it, I've maybe lost if count. It, maybe if they're playing against Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> Kevin, who do you got? Uh, just because everyone took Bama, I'm gonna take Ohio State. Oh, I um, like it. Okay, oh, look, Kevin, Bama, love it. Look, love Bama, it. Bama can beat some NFL teams right now. Uh, I, I I choose to root for the underdog. Plus, there's a Jeff Halfley connection there, obviously. So. Uh, what the hell? Let's go with Ohio State. <laughs> All right. And you know what? I'm going to change one of my picks, too, to make things a little interesting. I'm going to go with Baltimore instead of Tennessee. Oh, wow. All right, well. Make, make things a little interesting here. So, uh, I have – Kevin and I both have a chance to lose to everybody or a chance to beat everybody <laughs> or a chance to tie, technically. So, we'll, we'll see how things go. Should be interesting. But you got the national championship game Monday at what, 8.15, 8 o'clock. So that'll be a good battle between two tremendous programs, Ohio State and. It usually doesn't start until about 8.30. It usually kicks off pretty late. They usually kick off at some weird time, like 8.24 or something like that. So when we, when we can finally go back out to restaurants, is the loser buying the first round? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'll, and I'll probably buy the second and third round uh, as a thank you for you guys coming on. <laughs> Love it, Tom. Love it. Love it. 
Send the bill to Tom Nappy. So yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right. So uh, Bruin season starting up. We'll get some quick thoughts on that. Chara is obviously uh, heading out of town. Very sad to see him go to the Capitals, but kind of understandable. He's slowed down a bit for sure, but I would have loved to see him uh, be a lifelong Bruin. Uh, but to me, this team looks a little bit younger, perhaps a little more speed on the ice, which is something they certainly needed. And uh, I think they look like a contender. Do they have everything they need at this point? Probably not. I think they could still use a couple more pieces, but I do like uh, the fact that they're looking a little more speedy out there. And uh, hopefully they will have a little bit better of an offense last year but uh any Bruins thoughts guys I actually think they're gonna be terrible <laughs> um the fact that Tuka Rask is still here is mind-blowing to me yeah um, I don't like that how anyone can still trust him in a big spot he's great in the regular season that's cool what's he gonna do in May and June um they haven't replaced the defensive core that they lost uh, I think this is a very very down year for this team well yeah. very very well could be. I mean, they're only playing 50 games. It's going to be a quick season, yeah. too. And uh, I think getting rid of Chara, I mean, look, I, the guy was a phenomenal player, but it was it was time to move on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it just – I really don't know. I don't personally don't think there's going to be any fans allowed this year at any, any, any NBA or NHL games. The way it's going, maybe the, the postseason. And don't forget the Bruins are going to be playing the game in Lake Tahoe coming up in right. February. Mm-hmm. They have to get creative. I mean, again, it's just we've been we've been talking about this. Yeah, why are they doing that again? I, I just think I don't really don't know why, some, but I think it was playing on the golf course. Something about yeah. the scenery or something. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> you hope there's not ten feet of snow on the ground out there because the, it <laughs> yeah. snows a lot out in Lake Tahoe. But it I guess does. they're playing on a golf course, like the 16th, 17th, and 18th hole. They're gonna set up the rink. Yeah. They tried to do this at Fenway Park this year, but again, you just can't predict the weather. That's part of the problem. You know, you know well, outdoor the, hockey, the snow is pretty awesome. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. But that's why they're doing it. I don't, I don't think the Bruins are going to be terrible this year, but I don't think they're going to be outstanding either. Um, they're obviously playing in a tough division as well with a lot of uh, good teams. Um, I think it was definitely time to move on from Chara, but I do think it was pretty low of them, at least not to offer him uh, a contract for what was it like? 795 or something 800k yeah um, i mean give me a break Come it's not on, like that's he's ridiculous. not a good it's not like he's not a good clubhouse influence right you know he could have provided some veteran leadership again he's obviously you know not the player he used to be but you know yeah i don't know we'll see i do agree with kevin i don't like tuka being here still as well tuka's had some good seasons he's been you know he's been serviceable but you know i think it's time to move on from him yeah, and remember Tuca on the golf course last year after he uh, ended up leaving the bubble season or the, uh, the the bubble where they were finishing last season. After that, I wanted him gone. Very surprised he's back. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Hopefully he'll stick around and play this year and he'll be into it because when Tuca's not into it, he's just straight out not good. So... I think that's going to be something to watch. But if he blows it this year, bye-bye. They better just get rid of him. I don't care uh, what you have to do. Get him out of town. All right, we got uh, another minute or so left. Celtics 5-3. and three. They got a nice win against the Raptors last night. They're looking pretty good. I think they're going to be towards the top of the East. Uh, Philly right now looking like the best team. But I think Celtics will be in the playoff picture, especially uh, when they get some of their players back. Uh, any Celtics thoughts? Yeah, I I mean, I really like what I'm seeing from Peyton Pritchard and Robert Williams. I mean, Peyton Pritchard is uh, a baller. I mean, that guy is good, man. He is um, – he gets it. You know, he, he moves the ball well. Obviously, he can score. Um, good team player. And Robert Williams has just played with such high energy this year. He's really upped his game. Uh, really like what I'm seeing from both of those guys. And what was that? What was that move Pritchard was doing? He had, he's famous for some dance move, but anyways, it's just tough to watch these games. I mean, just you're like playing in an empty gym. I mean, it just there's just no. It's got to be really tough. I was watching them when they played in Detroit the other night. It was just it's like an exhibition. I it mean, is, I, I, yeah. Sports all year has been an exhibition, really. If you think yeah. about it, even watching these NFL games, it's just. And, and one thing I just want to point out real quick because I know we're, we're running out of time, but if players start testing positive. In the playoffs, the NFL has got a huge problem on their hands. There is no margin of error 
to move these games. No. None whatsoever. If you want to play that Super Bowl on February 6th, play a test positive this week, they're not playing in these games. And they have this luxury during the regular season. They don't well, now. Well, the Super Bowl, they'll find a way to play it. Well, they're going to play it, but I'm just saying if they want to play it on time, they don't want right. to move the games. They don't no, want to, should, but anything's on the table to get. They these. should just move it to President's Day weekend every every year. It's the smartest thing to do. You make it a holiday. I'm not sure why this year of any year would have been the best year to at least try it. Um, so I'm actually kind of hoping for the chaos now. <laughs>